What up, minions? Dungeon Master here. Burial ground video, tabletop, modular terrain. Stick around. First thing that I did was uh, cut out some squares of foam on my hot wire foam cutter. Um, three layers for the bottom, three layers for the top, and I would have the piece come apart in the middle. So I, I based it on a, a piece of uh, 12 by 12 inch plywood um, with each of the sections of the foam being, the, uh, the bottom being um, 8 inches by 8 inches roughly and the top portion being 6 inches by 6 inches roughly so that there was a good distance on either side to allow for, um, for decoration for the scatter on the outside of the terrain piece. These measurements weren't exact. Um, I pretty much eyeballed uh, most of this. And none of my lines were particularly straight either because I was gonna come back in and uh, trim up the edges after gluing them together. Here I'm just using a, a small cell foam roller that I got at the hardware store to spread out some tacky glue to glue the pieces together. It takes a lot longer uh, for tacky glue to cure when sticking pieces of foam together like this because the air can't really get at it. So after gluing these pieces together, I had to wait 24 hours before I could come in and cut the rest of the piece. I did not glue the top section to the bottom section. It looks like it here in this shot, but I didn't. I just set it there to rest, and then I set some heavy weights on it to dry overnight. Okay, the next thing to do um, was to mark where I was going to put the pieces uh, in the center. And I drew around it with uh, a Sharpie here, and then I came in with a piece that I was going to use. This was going to be the doorway. I made like a hinge shape to use for the doorway, but I ended up scrapping it. But I ended up keeping the doorway that I had carved out of it. So I just used it for the measurements for the doorway for the hill. I had some reference images that I got off of Google that I was using for this picture. And it's an approximation and it's not really anything specific. Uh, some things I don't, I feel like don't translate very well to this scale. And I didn't, um, I didn't want to make it look too perfect. It's got to have my style to it. And, as you can see, I just drew in the shape of the, the central chamber and then came in and uh, cut it out with my hot wire cutter. Just freehanding, mostly. I mean, I followed the lines as a guide, but I didn't try to be perfect with it. You can see here I took some uh, double-sided tape uh, that I got from a window insulation kit and used it to tack the top portion onto the bottom so that I could cut the front entryway shape out of the top portion of the building. In hindsight, it probably would have been easier just to make the top portion uh, smaller, but I liked having the shape from the front translate to the fr uh, to the front of the uh, the top portion as well, from the bottom to the top portion. And my hot wire cutter did cut through the dried tacky glue, but it was a little tougher uh, to do so. So just exercise caution and try not to snap your wire off um, when you're doing this. Don't put you don't use too much pressure. And now I'm just going to start shaping the hill. Just trying to be as random as I can with the wavy lines and trying not to cut through um, the section from the back wall, which I ended up doing anyway, and it was kind of thin. Uh, later on, in the, a later step, I ended up patching it using some filler, and that worked out okay. It was, like I said, it was a display piece, and it was meant to be put on a shelf. So I didn't really care too much for detailing the back portion of it, since it was going to sit against the back wall anyway. Now I missed a step here, um, the video for it actually got lost. I actually cut the top portion away once it was all glued together so that I could have the pieces separate. Again, so that you could see the inside portion. Um, I could have just left that top portion there and done it that way. 
I ended up molding up some her starts uh, pieces from one of my molds so that I could use wooden doors. The design for this piece called for three interior doors that led nowhere. It's uh, part of the, um, they, acted, they were going to act like portals um, to another realm or some such. And um, I didn't, uh, I didn't receive too much detail on that as I was making this piece for somebody else. They, they were giving me the specifics for it. I didn't, um, I didn't really question what, what it is that they, uh, the reasons why they wanted what they wanted. And some floor tiles for that were going to act as a central uh, dais for the, the burial section of the tomb. And just using some tacky glue to glue all the pieces together. cast a lot of little odds and ends that I felt would look uh, pretty cool in the central room like some uh, some canopic jars and some chests and barrels um, and I felt I got a pretty good assortment of things that would end up uh, going in there one of the things that I, I can't seem to find the footage of um, was the casting of the um, the mummified uh, remains that were inside I just used some paper towel and rolled it up in my fingers with some wet plaster and that uh, worked out pretty well for that. So when you see that portion later on when I'm painting it, that's all that is. And here, um, sped up so you can see the whole process, but I was gluing the walls together um, with some hot glue and then um, affixing them to the inside of the entrance. Uh, you can see some white, uh, what looks like white paint on the outside of this. I had started spreading some uh, spackling on the outside and decided I was going to put filler on the outside instead to strengthen it, which ended up being redundant in the long run because I planned on using a uh, basing paste that I had used in a previous video. Um, my video on uh, the Christmas trees and my video on the um, the tent in the campsite I ended up using that same basing material for those and and I ended up repurposing it here. You see I just used a paintbrush here. I could have stopped here. I could have used this um, this filler to uh, to be my texture for the outside. There's no problem with that. It would have worked. Um, but I decided I like the, the color and the texture of my uh, basing paste a lot better. So I ended up using that later. see how thin that back wall was this is actually the step in which I had mentioned earlier where I uh, 
uh, pasted in or uh, where I patched up a hole that I had made accidentally in the back when I sanded and cut too far into the, the back wall. And here I'm just uh, starting to lay some pieces inside just to see how they would look. Um, and I ended up settling on a 2x2 two two square for the dais in the center. I felt like the 6x2 uh, or 3x2 would have taken up way too much space on the inside. So I went with a 2x2 two two and that, that ended up looking okay. And I'm just being a little bit more picky than I usually am about which tiles I place in there. I was looking for the pattern in the tiles, the natural broken look, to uh, utilize that to my advantage. And uh, like I said, it, it worked out great, so I ended up keeping those uh, that 2x2 two two formation. see here I started working on a little pedestal to put in the center because originally I was going to make it a sacrificial chamber but uh, since it was meant to be a burial mound I ended up changing out the uh, the purpose of it I did keep this this little altar because I think it's a cool little addition that I will use in uh, my dungeon sets and whatnot um, so I ended up keeping it but it didn't get used for this project Again here, I'm just test fitting some pieces. I was very careful with a lot of this. I didn't uh, try to rush through any of this project. Like I said, it was, it's for somebody else. It was it was meant to be a gift and um, you know a collaborative gift at the same time. They had an influence on what was happening with it. But um, I realize that doesn't make much sense. But um, it was it was just how it ended up going down. So I was just trying to different positions for things before gluing them down to make sure I had the positions right. And if this were my piece, I wouldn't have glued any of this in. I would have left it empty and open so that I could change the, uh, the interior contents. And here you can see a uh, close-up view of the interior. The texturing was going to end up being pretty good. It ended up coming out a lot better, though, once I got the other texture paste on which you can see here. I'm just using a stippling effect with a crappy old brush uh, to get it to be as uh, sporadic and random as I can.
Okay, now I'm gonna use some 20 gauge steel wire to twist up some uh, deciduous trees. And um, I just use a technique that I've seen all over the place online uh, where you just take a, a length of wire. In this case, I took about 13 inches, uh, 14 inches, uh, probably about eight to 12 pieces for each tree. Uh, you know, even them all out and uh, here I bent them in half and uh, twisted them until I got a decent uh, trunk length. Once the trunk length, once the trunk length was uh, decent, um, I proceeded to split the uh, bundle of wire in half, twist, split in half, twist, split in half, and twist until I was left with a single strand on each one, um, and that gave me the look of a, uh, you know, a multi-branched tree. Now I have to say here uh, to be careful if you choose to use um, wire for this, especially a steel gauge wire because the, these little strands of wire can be quite sharp and I did stab myself several times with them during this so uh, definitely beware. I was being completely random with how I did this and then once I reached the end where there was a single strand I trimmed them a little shorter so that they looked more like a tree. going back to the loop on the bottom and trimming that up and spreading that portion out too so that it looks uh, like the roots. Okay, and uh, I wanted the trees to have some texture. So I ended up uh, hitting them with a whole bunch of tacky glue and sawdust and basically just flocking them like I would terrain. But I had to do this a couple of times because you could still see the shape of the twisted wire beneath the sawdust after only uh, one or two applications. So I did, I think, three uh, coats of this on there and let it dry in between each. It's one of the reasons why this project took so long. There was a lot of uh, waiting for things to dry. Be careful to hit them from every angle so that you don't have any wire showing through. I had to come back afterwards and touch it up a little bit, which only prolonged the process and the agony. Okay, um, now we're getting into the home stretch. Uh, I decided I wanted to further protect the uh, the part where the top and the bottom of the piece joined and uh, I decided to hit that with some uh, black uh, Mod Podge just to keep it uh, from getting damaged in any way like dropping or storage uh, To keep it from getting scuffed up or ruined and I probably didn't have to do this There was probably enough to it But also to like looking in from the outside if you saw pink foam you it would detract from the uh, the quality I felt of the piece so I decided to incorporate some of that into it um, to, to block out some of that um, that reality It's a little obscured by my hand here, uh, but I decided to prime the stonework with the black Mod Podge as well to help protect that since it was only plaster. I felt like that might get chipped or destroyed. So I wanted to make sure that that was as solid as I could before proceeding. So you'll recall I mentioned earlier that I made a little uh, mummy out of plaster and paper towel and you can see it over there on the left um, and I'm just going to get ready uh, these things all ready, get them primed, get them painted and uh, start placing them inside the model before finishing up the, uh, the painting for the actual base itself. 
So I wanted to have these ready to go for when I had all that done. So I had my doors and I just painted them in my usual scheme of uh, granite gray and uh, pewter gray. It's just, uh, you know, the light br dry brushing of the granite gray to give them the appearance of natural stone. But first, a priming with Mod Podge just to help protect them. And this started to get a little too messy, so I decided to throw on some gloves. For the painting of the mummy, I decided to mix up a sepia wash. Uh, I love the way that sepia looks on uh, white, and in fact, for most things that are already white, I don't even bother painting them with any paint. I just put the wash directly on them, as was the case with this. I didn't uh, do anything to this except just put the wash on it. I just used uh, some Vallejo Game Ink with some distilled water, and that served the purpose uh, pretty well. Um, I didn't bother putting in a surfactant or anything because I was just making a very small batch. Uh, but you could totally do that if you wanted it to sink more into the recesses, but I was looking for a little color and shade as well, so I decided to keep it just water and ink. Now there are no specific proportions here, uh, but it was uh, pretty much just a couple of drops of ink and uh, probably five times as much water, if I had to guess. Put several coats on and let it dry in between until I got a color that I found desirable. And then uh, the leftover wash I just saved in a container for later to reuse. And then on to painting the rest of the accessories. the trees once they were dry. You'll notice I'm spraying indoors. I do this a lot, um, but I usually run a ventilator. 
Um, by that, I mean I usually run a fan uh, to keep the fumes away from me. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, please, by all means, spray outside. Also, it's been frigid cold here for the last several weeks, and um, spraying outside is really not an option. Just be careful and don't spray too much into the air and keep, the, keep a fan running or something and uh, open a window and you'll be fine. I ended up using tacky glue to glue the trees to the base, but I also covered them in more of the basing material. Um, it was a little bit daunting to get them to stick properly and to get them to stay straight up, but in the end it worked out. And I, if it works out, I don't question it. I, I have my doubts as I'm going, but oftentimes it's, it's fine. Um, so now I'm just uh, grabbing some large rubble and I'm going to start flocking my base and um, I'm going to put some larger rocks around the bases of the trees and then make some scatter with some smaller rocks and some of the cracks along the base of the hill. I'm just picking the spots randomly. There isn't really any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. Um, I just kind of guessed where a rock would be underneath a tree and put it there, and it looks okay. Um, it really does turn out all right that way. So, um, I mean, don't be afraid to try that kind of thing on your own pieces if you make them. Just, um, you know, random I think is better. I think in the long run it just ends up making things look more natural. Now I'm just going to run a bead of tacky glue uh, along the outside edge, I'm kind of giving it some gaps here and there and a couple of spots up top and then I'm going to add a larger rubble and then sprinkle it with some smaller sand in order to give it a more realistic appearance and to break up the monotony of the outside edge a little bit. Using PVA glue for these pieces is really the way to go. I tried hot glue to glue the stones to the piece and hot glue does not stick to these stones at all, but PVA glue sticks perfectly. The other thing I could have used to stick the larger stones down would have been some E6000 or Gorilla Glue, um, but the PVA glue works fine. You just have to wait for it to dry. Next I decided to paint the trees brown. Um, I actually had forgotten that they were still black. I get so hyper focused on putting down other pieces that I often forget uh, a step or something like that. So if you see me going back to do something that you would have done earlier on, that's why it's just my ADHD taking over. Um, I decided to cover the top part uh, brown too, just in case um, you saw it. Uh, I think the, the black wouldn't have been good enough there and might have taken away from the finished product for what I had planned. And you'll see um, that it worked uh, later on when you get the, the finished product. This is just a burnt umber craft paint. Um, I didn't even bother watering it down for this piece. Um, it didn't really need it. I'm just putting it on straight. But you can use uh, any other color of brown that you'd like. You could use a, a lighter brown. Um, most of this uh, on the outside edges is going to end up being covered anyway. Most of it's for texture. But in the event that the grass flocking that I'll put on towards the end uh, comes off, you'll be able to see the, the brown ground beneath the flocking rather than uh, pink styrofoam. So. And 
And earlier in the video, you saw I had made a uh, hinge-like door structure that I was going to put over the entrance to this um, that I didn't like. Well, I revisited that idea and decided um, that now that the piece was mostly finished, that I could in fact uh, do that. So I cut up some strips of quarter inch thick uh, XPS foam, they're roughly three quarters of an inch thick. And um, I measured them, sticking them between the space. There's a, a gap I left between the stonework and the, the main uh, wall of the hill. And it, this worked to my advantage to be able to fit these pieces into. Uh, I figured they'd be built in like that, kind of, you know, over the wear and cor uh, course of time, over, you know, years and years and years of the mound just sitting there, that these pieces would somehow end up a part of the mound and kind of enveloped by the earth. Um, so, I, I mean, it doesn't quite look that realistic in that regard, but it provided enough of an illusion of an entryway that I, I liked it and I kept it. And here I'm just using my uh, black ballpoint pen to sketch out some cracks in the stone, and I'll even uh, pick away some pieces of the stonework using uh, just pinching it away with my fingers and uh, textured it with a good old uh, foil ball. Then I fastened the pieces uh, to the wall using some good old uh, PVA glue. And then the, uh, the same with the crossbeam on top. I just uh, I laid it against the, the back wall, measured it, cut it, and glued it to the front with PVA. And I decided that that entranceway was too tall, so I decided to shorten the height of it by blocking it with this piece instead of extending the two bottom pieces up. I had one of those moments like you know what the hell was I thinking right I spread glue all along the top of that and my piece barely covered it um, and you'll see here when I put it on there's a lot of leftover glue so I ended up just going over it with a watered down uh, wet uh, paintbrush to spread the glue around and to wipe off some of it. Uh, it it's it's all good it works out PVA dries clear I just I made a mess of the damn thing as you can see so just try to be a little bit more careful than I was. And now I'm just going to hit that exposed foam with a little bit of uh, black mod podge. touch up of brown paint around the areas where I got sloppy.
know this was a long one, so uh, bear with me. Uh, we're gonna get to part two next week where we'll cover the painting and the finishing of the piece. That's gonna be a little bit of a lengthy video too because there was some stuff that I went over and touched up, uh, went back and fixed some things, but uh, this video was starting to drag on, so I felt like it was a good time to stop it for this week. If you like what I'm doing and like these videos to continue, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It's all, only a dollar a month and you get uh, access to everything once you unlock that. I, I only have one tier. So um, some people pledge more, some people don't, it's up to you. Uh, also, I have a, an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Uh, you shop normally and I get a small kickback. It's, it's a great free way to help support the channel. Uh, and I'll often in the description post links to things that I use in the videos if I use a, a specialty tool or a material that I don't normally use I'll often post a link there so that's a great way to help support the channel as well don't forget to hit the like button subscribe uh, leave a comment down below um, you guys made some big terrain pieces this was this was quite an undertaking I've never done anything this big before um, you know let me know let me know what you think uh, down below right peace dungeon master out see you next time bye for now Thank you.